In this video, we're going to get ready to do some trig graph transformations. Before we do that, I want to talk about periodic functions. I want to define what a periodic function is, and I want to explain what a period and a phase shift are, as well as amplitude and vertical shift. First of all, let's look at our basic sine function. We've already talked about the domain and the range of the basic sine function. The domain is all possible x's, negative infinity to positive infinity, but the range was between negative 1 and positive 1. Those are the only values we could have for y. Well, let's look at this more closely. First of all, the graphs that you see have all been drawn with WinPlot, a shareware software package available at math.exeter.edu slash rparis. A periodic function, such as our basic sine function, is a function whose graph repeats itself identically from left to right, or on the x-axis. For instance, if I look at this part of my sine function, I see that it repeats again here, and it will do that positively and negatively. Wherever you look at the sine function, you'll see this same cycle repeating itself. We can also talk about this mathematically, saying that a periodic function can be represented by f of x is equal to f of x plus some number p for all x. If I have a point here, and if I go a set distance, it repeats itself here. So the sine function is a periodic function. And we actually have a special name for that distance p. It's called the period. The period of the function is the horizontal distance, that is the distance along the x-axis, required to have a complete cycle. Here on the sine function, you can see that the period goes from 0 to 2 pi. If this was in terms of degrees, it would have been from 0 to 360 degrees. So a basic sine function has a period of 2 pi. And that's also true for the cosine function. We found that for the tangent function, the period was only pi. But right now we're only going to focus on sine and cosine. The frequency of a function is simply the reciprocal of the period. The frequency is 1 divided by the period. We'll be talking mainly about the period and not the frequency, but I did want to mention this. Another characteristic of a periodic function that we need to talk about is a possible phase shift. That is, the shift of a periodic function horizontally. For instance, right here, I have a positive phase shift of pi over 2. I take my original curve in red and shift it to the right 90 degrees, and the function is identical to the original function, except it's all moved to the right. So a phase shift is a horizontal shift of a periodic function. We also need to talk about the amplitude of a function. An amplitude is half the distance between the max and the min values of a periodic function, or half of the range of a function. The amplitude of this function, of the basic sine function, is 1. We can also think of the amplitude, in a sense, as the radius of a periodic function. Just as the radius of a circle was half the diameter of a circle, the amplitude is half the range of a periodic function. And remember, amplitude is always positive. Just like we couldn't have had a circle with a negative radius, amplitudes are always positive. We can also shift this function, not just horizontally, but vertically. Instead of picking up the function and moving it left or right, we can pick up this function and move it up or down. Why are we talking about this? Well, in another video, we're going to go through some trig graph transformations, and we're going to deal with this function. This is a general sine function. f of x is equal to a, I bet you can guess that a has something to do with amplitude, times sine of bx plus c. Remember, those parentheses are critical. The b is going to have something to do with the period of the function, and the c and the b together will help determine the phase shift, and that d is going to be our vertical shift. We'll go into a lot more detail about this, but make sure you understand what I mean about amplitude, phase shift, period, and vertical shift before we move on to the next video. And again, we've gone through the basic definitions that we need to know in order to do our trig transformations.